I'm Jalud el uh, on this first day of um, April, uh, uh, Juma, at Masjid al Mubanun. And with me is uh, Isaac Kareem, pioneer, and I'll be interviewing him about his experiences as a Muslim in America. Uh, my first question to you, Brother Zach, is uh, what was it like growing up in Memphis and also meeting Sister Adela Kareem? Well, she and I uh, met in 47 for a meeting. You know, I knew her when she first came to Memphis, her parents. And uh, my parents and uh, her father was um, the master of the lodge, and my father belonged to the lodge. But getting back to um, Islam and her, we were in, I joined the Navy in 1952, and we got married in 52. And uh, that's when we started the journey, this life together was back in 1952, in March, on March the 15th. Uh, we got married, I joined the Navy, and we took a halfway around the world cruise, she and I, in the Navy, and we just started to travel to go and see what the world was like. We didn't have any children at the time. And our uh, first child was born in 54. So it was my first child. Islam, I came in touch with Islam, a young man on board ship with me. His name was Brother Nevin Porter. And um, he was sort of an extremist, I thought, at the time. I didn't understand Islam because I didn't know. I ain't never heard nothing about Islam, even though I had been over in the East, uh, in Egypt, uh, in, um, uh, in uh, Arabia. The city in Arabia I had been to, and uh, I had been to the Middle East, and uh, I had been told that uh, be careful with the people in the Middle East that they were extremists. I didn't know what they were talking about. At the time, I was a young man and I was just in the Navy. But um, I learned quite a few things with that brother Nezri. He introduced me to Islam. And um, so we was on the ship together and on the way back home, uh, he invited me to the next year in Boston, Massachusetts. And that's where I met up with uh, the Elam, or the minister, the he was calling, Louis Farrakhan. I'm and about to just go back all right, to the point whereby you accepted Al Islam on the ship. Mm -hmm. um, explain to the, the audience what it was like being on that ship and the experience of being a Muslim, the first and probably the only Muslim on that ship and the things that happened as a result of that. Well, what I'd like to say is this. Um, I could not join the masjid at the time of the mosque. At that time, we couldn't and uh, we were in the service. But we could come together as a group, you know. Um, I just, I was not able to join um, the religion of Islam until I had gotten out in 1962. And uh, in 57 is when I adhered. And I bought, in 59 I bore witness that there was no God that along. Were you interviewed by any of the top brands or, or agents yeah, or anybody yeah, that, yeah. when you were considering or yeah. accepted? No, after I had accepted, 
uh, the CIA and the FBI. They in, uh, they um, interviewed me. How did uh, they come? How did they come about? Well, they came aboard uh, the base. They had taken me off the ship and put me on the base. Uh, because they, you became and a they, and they uh, that was the reason. And um, uh, John, uh, Vice Admiral, he was the Vice Admiral there. Uh, I can't think of his name right now. On the base in Newport, Rhode Island, when we got back there, uh, had him to uh, interview me uh, to uh, see what was on my mind or what I thought about the Navy and everything, you know. And uh, I told him, uh, in order for me to start talking about anything, I'd have to have a copy of what I said. And I had one for a long time. I kept it with me until I got out of the Navy. Uh, they, they asked me a lot of questions. They, I remember what, the first thing they come to interview me about. They wanted to know why that I want to be a Muslim. And uh, so uh, in this year, I told them I wanted to be a Muslim because it was my way of life before I got back there. And uh, when we were brought over here, it was taken from us and what had happened to us and everything. And um, the fellow who was uh, working for Adam Buchanan was his name, Adam Buchanan, I believe his name was. And uh, the guy who was working and doing this for the Admiral, uh, when I told him, I said, uh, I, don't, I won't go from it. I said, I have to have a coffee. And I, he said, well, you can't do that in you and the I said, well, I can't go no further. And they called uh, Washington and talked to the Capitol Hill, talked to uh, Admiral B. Kelman. And Admiral B. Kelman said, give him a coffee. So they gave me a coffee. They asked me for it. They talked to me for about 14 hours the first time. And a second time, when uh, they interviewed me, that's the word I want to use in the interview. They interviewed me the first time, it was about 14 hours. But the uh, interview that they had, they asked a lot of questions and tried to say a lot of bad things about the Arm of Ali Muhammad until uh, we got together and I got them straight on it. You know, but in reality, it was an incredible issue. Right, right, right. Uh, uh, about it, they uh, uh, we had a man from the CIA, a young fellow from the CIA. He said, uh, "What about this guy, Mohammed? Uh, he's trying to overthrow this and overthrow that." I said, "I don't know nothing about it." So he said, what did they teach y'all? I said, freedom, justice, and equality. This was what they were teaching y'all. He says, uh, we've been told that you would not go to war for this country. You tell us what you say about it. I said, so I told him like he said. I says, um, I joined the Navy and signed a contract. And I'm going to live up to my contract. They asked me again, and I told them the same thing. So the FBI man told the CIA man, I said, leave him alone. So he gave us a good answer. Like this year. So I would like to say the second time they came in, they had a uh, Fellow who was so arrogant. And uh, he was a really guy. I, mean, I can't think of his name, not a thing, 30 years ago. But uh, he said, uh, Open your locker. He took me up the stairs where uh, our lockers were and everything. He said, Open your locker. So I started opening the locker. And because they had some guys with. Guns, you know, rifles and things. 
I said, no, no, no. I said, you can open it. Mm -hmm. They said, what's wrong? You can't open it. I said, you can open it. I said, they, I don't have nothing. Did uh, you carry your life with them? No. And, you know, I said, but I, 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 I wasn't very intelligent. I'm going to put it like that. I wasn't scared of nothing. Mm -hmm. I was made in there. But an ordinary person, the problem was with the world. Sure, you feel. And I'm the ordinary person. The way they, the way they talk to you, mm -hmm. you know, and everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, but God said, "Open it." So the guy said, "You call me the, uh, you call us devils, talking to some other fellows on the board ship." I said, "I didn't call you that." I said, "You read Saint John, the fourth chapter, forty-fourth chapter." I said, in the Bible, I said, it says, you and your father the devil, and the lust of the things that he do, you will do. Mm -hmm. I said, and so uh, I told him to read that from there, because he gave me my Bible. I had a Bible in my locker and a Quran, you know, and uh, he gave me the Bible, I showed it to him. I said, I didn't say it, you said it about yourself. He said, well, that's enough of that. Like that, you know. So uh, we went on, and so we went on with the lady asked me a lot of questions. They asked me, uh, why did I join the religion? I had to join the religion. I had no witness, but uh, I had to just outright join the religion because I couldn't. Now, Elijah Muhammad wouldn't let you into the religion when you were uh, in the armed forces because he said you couldn't serve two masters. And he said that Allah was one master, and the armed forces was another. Yeah. When you, um, do, do you think that experience sort of uh, consolidated the feeling about that Islam? Oh, well, yes, because a man who came to us and brought Islam to us here in North America, was known to us as Master Farad Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And the Almighty Muhammad said he was Allah in the person. And um, he uh, told us and gave us the language that we had to speak in and that our ministers be speaking in. And the guy cut me off right then and there and said, well, what about Malcolm X? He said so and so and so and so and so and so. I said Malcolm X. I said you mean Malik. I said because we call him uh, um, uh, Malik. I said uh, you know I said most of us did. I said Shabbat. His name was uh, Malik Shabbat. I said uh, and they cut off of that right away. I said then they went to ask me questions about. Uh, why did I go to that religion? They kept going back to that. Why? Why? What, what, and was it because it was just something strange about accepting El Islam? Or uh, as an African American, accepting anything other than. What well, it was this. They asked me questions, and I didn't answer the questions they wanted them answered. Then I started answering the questions like I had been taught, or like they taught in the temples. You know, they, like they taught in the temples. And uh, they didn't like that too much. And um, because um, when we got to talking, as I said, it was about 14 hours of talking, uh, the FBI man, the one who shouldn't have been the intellectual one, he says to the uh, commanding officer who was in there with us on the base, he says, he's not dangerous, like they said. Mm -hmm. He said, um, but he is a pretty well knowledgeable fellow of what they be teaching around the country, you know. So he was a good student. Yeah. But what was it like accepting Pan Islam, you know? father, uh, husband, you know, in that era, during that period of time. 
It was very uh, difficult. Was it easy? No, it was easy. It, it was easy. You see, we were in a time when the country was in a serious matter. They had killed Emmett Till, uh, the brother in Mississippi, and some other, I think it was four or five guys, were freedom fighters. Mm -hmm. They had killed all of them. And uh, when they asked me questions like, uh, what if we have a right? You know, I told them, I said, I will not kill a black man for you. I said, you start a war with the black people. I said, you didn't kick me out the service. You know, he said, no, we wouldn't be going to kick you out. You uh, swore that you would do this and do that. I said, what if I swore something that I didn't know nothing about? I said, I was doing something for what I thought was my country. Uh, the guy said, this is your country. I said, how can it be my country? And you don't want my children to go to school, to a good school. I said, you don't want us to go into hospitals and different things to do, a lot of things, you know. When we have jobs, I say, you talk about us and say bad things about us. And then you send us off to war. And so he said, well, enough of that, you know, uh, because he was pushing in front of us. Mm -hmm. But uh, then uh, that uh, um, came to an end that day. And he told the commanding officer, he says, if you have any problem out of him, he says, call me. Send for me. He said, we can come up here and die. He said, if you have any problem, he said, I don't think you don't have problems. So we had one little problem. I was uh, sleeping in barracks. Uh, with mostly white guys because I was a commissary and a cook. And um, one of the guys left a note on my bed. We don't you get know, here. And I took it to uh, the commander. Took not the commander, of, but the officer in charge. But then I told him, I said, uh, I think all of you transferred. I said, because if anybody come up around my bed at night, I said, I'm going to kill him. I wasn't playing like that. I wasn't fishing to be up there and they got talking that crazy talk, you know, and everything. So they moved me out of the barracks into the barracks with what was known as the stewards in the Navy. They had the officers cook. And the officers cook with proteins and black. So uh, that's what they did with that. I, I, I didn't get. Um, What I, what I would like to uh, make that transition from the military life into domestic life as a Muslim. Oh, so that's why, I, no, I would, I would ask you, after you uh, what was it like um, accepting El Islam? Mm -hmm. um, and maybe I left out something, accepting El Islam and being out of the military uh, to be a Muslim. Which is as a father and as a well, uh, what happened person. is, um, for the salute. Mm -hmm. See, uh, once I told them, I says, uh, you know what, I says, uh, uh, I accepted Islam. I took Shahada, mm -hmm. you I accepted Islam. It didn't matter what a who or anywhere, uh, how the Ahmad Muhammad or anyone was trying to uh, cause a peaceful way to do things, uh, I was a Muslim. And um, it, um, it was a problem, because a lot of us uh, Muslims, you know, uh, we started to talk. And uh, a lot of the whites wanted to come hear us talk with one another. And we let them come in. And, uh, Armed forces itself said this is going to cause a problem. So they couldn't come to. Uh